Well, I wrote this book, The Soul Genome, Science and Reincarnation, as a result of an experiment that we started some years ago to try to bring reincarnation into the scientific community uh, based on empirical evidence. In other words, not something that a psychic tells us or not something that one has a dream about and says, I am the reincarnation of Cleopatra because I dreamed I was, or because of hypnotic regression. Uh, these areas, hypnotic regression, dream therapy, psychic information, may be suggestions of a past life connection, but no one can prove them, no one can test them. So what we've done in our reincarnation experiment, and which is reported in this book, is we have taken those suggested past life connections and we have applied this scientific model of measurements using both physical tools and psychological tools to compare the similarities between the past life and the person living today. And what we've done is to develop a, uh, a scientific concept that we call the psychoplasm. The popular term I'm using is the soul genome. Uh, what that does is it implies the traditional idea of the soul is somehow connected to our human genome. And the psychoplasm is just a Greek term to mean the container and all the factors that are in it, which get passed from one generation to the other. Now, the interesting thing about course, reincarnation, is that it doesn't always happen in the same family. In other words, it doesn't go from mother to daughter, mother to son, or grandfather to son necessarily. There are many cases where that seems to be the case, but uh, most of the evidence suggests reincarnation from outside the family phylogenetic tree. And so this book raises the question do we have any scientific evidence that such a mechanism, which is not just physical, but which involves information and energy and patterns and memories, and yes, the world of science today, in terms of physics, in terms of biology, uh, in terms of genetics, in terms of evolutionary theory, all of these point to the notion that energetic information fields are the basis of life. Now you can use the term soul genome for that, but I use terms as a scientist like biofields, information fields, energetic patterns that are embedded in the human at the point of conception when you begin the process of developing a new being. And so the book really uh, gives the evidence uh, for that hypothesis. And uh, I have to say that the scientific community as a whole is not yet ready to accept this notion. But what we're doing in our experiment is collecting the evidence, writing it down, photographing it, measuring it, <laughs> evaluating it, so we have enough evidence that suggests that there is no better explanation for the evidence than reincarnation. Now, there are other theories like Carl Jung's archetype, <laughs> like uh, the Akashic records that are out there that Edgar Casey and other psychics can read, uh, but these explanations don't uh, satisfy the evidence that I'm talking about. They can't account for the physical similarities that I'm talking about. That has to come through the genome. 
they can't talk, uh, they can't really explain uh, things about specific memories that no one else has had and that no one else has access to. So the scientific evidence, I believe, suggests that we have an individual psychoplasm or soul genome which is independent of a particular physical body and that it incarnates in the process of conception and birth in the carry forward of that same legacy doesn't mean that we're going to be exactly the same person again but it means that we start with the same legacy the same predispositions and then as we make choices in this lifetime as our environment changes as circumstances change we grow and evolve so back to the first question that you asked what is the role of reincarnation in my view reincarnation is the essential mechanism by which the universe preserves consciousness and our learning what we as individuals learn and add to overall consciousness of the human species and all species uh, i would say if reincarnation exists it exists not only among humans but also among other species whether on this planet or on any other planet you have the same mechanism reincarnation is to consciousness as einstein's theory is uh, when he used the formula e equals mc squared which says energy can be changed from one form to the other but it cannot be destroyed and I'm suggesting in reincarnation research that reincarnation is the law by which consciousness can be changed from one form to the other but cannot be destroyed that's the soul genome. I became interested in reincarnation research many, many years ago from a philosophical or religious uh, orientation, trying to raise the question of what is the meaning of reincarnation as it has uh, been used over the centuries. But I came to that work uh, basically from my uh, studies as a psychologist in uh, graduate programs uh, in my development as, as, as a professional. And I thought that I really wanted to apply a scientific and psychological perspective to the question of, is reincarnation anything more than simply a concept or a spiritual idea. So my background is in, uh, my academic background is in uh, clinical psychology and in personality theory. And as I began to read the work done by Ian Stevenson, a psychiatrist in the United States who died in 2007, who's probably the most important scientific researcher in reincarnation to date. Looking at the evidence he collected and that other people collected, I began to see these patterns that I described as physical and personality factors. And this grew out of a perspective that only a psychologist who has been thinking about how humans develop and what shapes us into the kinds of personalities that we have. And when I began to look at the evidence, I, I, I began to realize that if reincarnation is real, then it is the most important factor in our development as personalities, as psychological, intellectual beings uh, in a process of self-learning and self-development.